And Barry, I guess this comes down to a question of timing. Uh, the two big revelations, of course, that uh, Julie Gillard says she's spoken to both Craig Thompson and Peter Slipper, asking them to stand aside. Why has she done this now? Yeah, the timing is critical to this. I'm tempted to say too little, too late, but uh, only half of that is true. It's not too little in this sense that these are significant manoeuvres uh, with both Craig Thompson and Peter Slipper. Too late in this sense, too late to, to undo the damage that has been done to the government and to Julie, uh, Julia Gillard in particular on both issues. You know, it, I, I think on this, because, um, because of the outcomes, both the Craig Thompson issue and the Peter Slipper issue, I think the heat will go off both of those uh, issues for a while. But here's the real paradox. I think at the same time, the heat will only increase now on, on Julia Gillard, on her credi credibility, her judgment and her leadership. Now, she says that this uh, line has been crossed with respect for Parliament. What, what does she mean by that? Yeah, see, the, the, what she, she, she attempted to do there was to make it clear that she took the initiative in both cases. It was Julia Gillard who weighed all this up, went to Peter Slipper and said, I think you ought to um, stay, remain suspended until all of these matters are at least well into the future, until these matters are dealt with. And it was Julia Gillard who then went to, uh, to Craig Thompson and said that I think you ought to be suspended from the Parliament and sit on the cross benches. She was taking the initiative. All very good. And in normal circumstances, that would look good. The problem is, as you uh, pointed out, out from the start, the timing. Why wasn't this done earlier? She asked the, the question of herself. Why wasn't it done earlier? And she said because, you know, the dark clouds were over the parliament. There was no respect for the place. Um, the, a line which has been crossed. But at what point was the line crossed? She was arguing just days ago that the... Um, um, that, it, that it was OK for Peter Slipper to sit in, in the chair uh, while the, the civil case was still to be resolved. So at what point was the line crossed? Bill Shorten, her workplace relations minister, clearly made the judgment days ago that the line had already been crossed. She hadn't made that judgment. And when it was pointed out to her that uh, she left, I think by Michelle Grattan, that she'd left um, Anthony Albanese uh, out to dry, um, well, that is true. He, he was arguing so passionately on this, but not only Anthony Albanese, the Attorney General, Nicola Roxon, um, very strongly ran the argument, the precedent argument, that there was a precedent and, and therefore it was right and proper for, for Peter Slipper to resume the chair once the criminal allegations have been cleared. Um, so it's been a real mess. Um, I think it will, as I said, take some of the heat off the issue. They will probably now clear the decks um, uh, for the budget and when Parliament uh, resumes on Tuesday week, at least there'll be a lot of interest in that and there'll be a bit of uh, space in the media uh, to deal with it. The problem, the problem for Julie Gillard, the ongoing problem that I think just uh, was um, became worse and not better today for her is about judgment and the fact that she had to reverse her thinking from only a few days ago. So Barry, I mean, you say this clears the air in, in uh, the parliament somewhat. What about in, in the general electorate then? How are people going to interpret these moves? Well, I think the electorate will be relieved about a couple of things. They will probably judge, right, well, Peter Slipper won't be in the, in the chair anytime soon, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, on the Craig Thompson thing, surely they'll judge, this is common sense. Finally, common sense has prevailed. But then the secondary question is, why didn't it prevail months ago? And it didn't prevail months ago, as I said earlier, because um, the government didn't want to push a fragile Craig Thompson too hard. They didn't want to get to the position where he might quit the parliament. They wouldn't have a chance of uh, winning the seat, and then they really would lose a number. As it stands now, He'll sit on the cross benches and presumably vote for the Labor Party. We'll hear from him soon enough, but you'd think that's pretty much as he will behave. So I think the, the, the public will judge uh, good as far as it goes, um, but I think the judgments that they've been making about Julia Gillard over the last 12 months, I think those judgments will only get harsher. And do you think um, the independents, the other three independents, uh, that this move will reaffirm their support for the government? I, I, do, I do believe that to be the case. Uh, not so much with Andrew Wilkie, but I think both Rob Oakeshott and Tony Windsor, they can speak for themselves. But based on, on what they've been saying up until now, um, they've been sticking by the government despite all of this. And now that the government has moved to take some of the heat off it and come up with a couple of sens sensible outcomes in, in both cases, and I think that will reinforce uh, their views. Andrew Wilkie was uh, at pains this morning on Insiders to say, look, I haven't made any, any judgment yet about a censor motion against the government and what I would do. I, He's keeping an eye on it. And if things, he said, if things deteriorated, uh, then he would consider supporting a censure motion. Well, based on, on any evidence, the situation has not deteriorated as a result of today. It's improved in terms of uh, the respect that people would have for the parliament. The problem, though, for Julie Gillard is not that. It's not the independence any longer. It's not Andrew Wilkie. The problem Julie Gillard has is what are the backbenchers in her own party now thinking about her performance?